Good morning. This is Thursday. It is September the 2nd. No, the 1st. No, the 2nd. You see, it's come up in the middle of the week, and I can't keep up with it. It is the 2nd of September, uh, and we are entering to a month. We're here at Sunset Park Baptist Church. We try to have, uh, if we're able to, last year we weren't able to, um, but to have a homecoming a service where former members come and we worship the Lord together and we we uh, remember his work in us we proclaim his work in us today and we look forward to the work that he's going to do in us in the years to come and so as we think about homecoming it has uh, kind of led me to look into scripture for homecomings in scripture and they're there uh, we just have to think about them and so I want you to get your Bibles today, and uh, this is an odd place to turn, uh, but turn to 1 John chapter 4, and uh, we'll be discussing an aspect of homecoming uh, today. So let's begin with prayer. Father, we thank you for your word that cuts into our hearts, that convicts us, that challenges us, that encourages us, that equips us for ministry, to serve you to do good works in this life. And that's the fruit of us living in the light of Jesus Christ and being saved. I pray, Father, that as we read your word, that your spirit would take it and sanctify us, bring us into Christ's likeness, that we might be conformed to his image in the way we live, that we might be transformed in the way we think, that we might be like Jesus. Bless us in such a way today. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, in thinking about homecoming, we're going to be having ours on September the 12th. Uh, it, it may not be exactly what it's been in the past, but it, we are going to have a special day where we focus on those th three things. Uh, the past glory of God here, his work here, the present work here, and the future work here. What we see him doing in and among us. And as we think about homecomings in scripture, I'm reminded first of the prodigal son, who after living a life of sin and filling his own flesh and pleasure, squandering all that he had uh, in desperation, turned back, repented to his father. And returning home, he was fearful of how he might be received. And so that's what I want to think about today. As he was fearful in, in what he, how he might be received by his father, his father could cast him out, his father could reject him, his father could browbeat him, but his father, who had been patiently waiting, received his, his son, welcoming him with forgiveness and with love. And so that's the way our Heavenly Father does for us. We were created by Him. We were created for Him. We've gone our own way. We've lived our own life. And He patiently waits. He's provided a way through faith in Jesus Christ for us to return to Him. And He's patiently waiting. And as some people say, sometimes just like the prodigal son, we have to reach our bottom. We have to hit the bottom of our lives and everything taken away from us before we'll turn to God. And that's what this prodigal son did. He reached the bottom, had nowhere else to turn, no hope in life, and he returned to his father. But he returned fearfully all the way up to when he met his father. So I want us to look in 1 John chapter 4, and I want to see uh, these scriptures, and I hope they help us to realize the amazing love that Jesus has for each person when he died on the cross. In John chapter 4, verse 16, it says, So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. Now this word abiding means uh, not just to be there, but it's a place of rest. It's a place of protection. It's a, it's a place where we can do nothing without him. God is everything to us, and we exist, and we stay in him. Not just in his presence, but in him. Our life came from him, and our life will return to him. 
It will return either to be accepted or rejected, depending on what we do with Jesus Christ. Uh, in this verse, we see that he says, we have come to know and to believe. We are perfected in what we know and believe. We've heard the gospel. Uh, we've shared it. We share it in our church, in our teachings, in our writings. Jesus Christ was the way to the Father. He came and he substituted his life to accept the wrath of God against sin, against rebellion, against disbelief and, and disobedience, which we call he calls sin and, and we see it in our lives. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we know this and we know that Jesus took our place on the cross. And God tells us to trust in that to give our lives to Jesus and to live for him. Uh, we can either do that or not do it. We can believe or not believe. We know the love of God when we accept what he has said and we believe it. We put our faith, we put our life into it and live according to that. And that's what he's saying here. We un understand and we're committed to Jesus. We understand him who he is, what he's done for us, and we're committed to that. Then in verse 17 says, By this love is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because he, as he is, so also are we in this world. Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. And then he said, turns right around and says, You're the light of the world. Uh, as he was light and he shined out into the darkness, we, through the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, who believe in Jesus and have been saved, are lights who shine out into the dark world. Uh, we are perfected and have confidence. We're completed and we're bold uh, in, in this life. Our perfection in Jesus is complete in Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we become bold witnesses for him, not backing up, not giving up for the Holy Spirit that dwells in each believer in Jesus Christ is, uh, is bold to share the gospel. Um, and then verse 18, it says, there is no fear in love. Now the prodigal son, remember, was filled with fear, but his father had, had love for him. But perfect love, the perfect love of God, casts out all fear. When the prodigal son reached home and his father hugged him and loved on him and celebrated, uh, all the fear that he had every step of the way on his long journey home uh, just dissipated. It faded away. It says, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has been perfected in love. The love of God is perfect. It's complete. And it gives us grace. And it shows us mercy. So when we decide that we have to turn and believe in Jesus, and we're fearful of what God may do and how he might respond, just remember that he, he, is, he is benevolent in his love. He is giving. That's why Jesus went to the cross. The love of God, the depth of God's love, the, the intensity of God's love was revealed when Jesus died on the cross. And when he rose from the grave to new life, he gives hope to each one who puts their faith in him that we will live a new life with him forever. This is the love of God. And when we reach God and we put our faith in Jesus, all the fears we have disappear because of his love. And then in verse 19, it says, We love because he first loved us. Jesus loved me. He loved you before we were ever born. He loved mankind, and he came and paid the price, sacrificing himself, rising again on the third day so that we could experience the love of God in this life as well as in the life to come rejecting Jesus and determination that we have to disbelieve and disobey and live our own lives uh, shows uh, we'll never experience the love of God and we will always live in fear. So my hope and prayer for you today is that you're not living in fear of God. 
You're not living in fear of the punishment for your sins. You're not hiding and being defensive, but you are hopeful, you are freed, you are justified before a holy God because of his perfect love. I hope you experience his perfect love by faith in Jesus Christ today. And may you be blessed as you seek him and his love.